So it made you decide to get this one here. They allowed me to, to buy one. <laughs> okay. Inside there, and it also changed the um, the map as well. So it's got a lot better map into it as well. But visually, it's exactly the same, apart from what bit of coolness. Right. Next, down the side, mirrors. Now these don't do much, so don't get excited. That's all they do. That's it, and that's it. And if you're really screwing up, it goes that way too. But yeah, they, they don't really much. So it's another feel good thing. Right. <laughs> the, uh, if you're into artistic things, the lights are pretty cool. Um, the lights on this, I always get big marks from all your artist friends. <laughs> wow, that's so cool. But you can kind of see just by the shape of the whole car, why you're going to end up running with windows up. Because the hot air is going to come out of here it's going to stay attached to the bodywork and then boop, straight and south down. Right. So, get the windows up for any air conditioning or <laughs> it's going to get hot. The, uh, now, something that not a lot of people know about is these front vents right here. In your sales material, I bet half of the pictures have this flat and half of it got the slot in here because this wasn't in the original design. Originally, this is supposed to be flush. We found that, just with normal testing, the front underwing was so powerful as it was pinning the nose down whenever, the, if the wing was not deployed, it was front pinned and the back was down. Hmm. So to kill the aerodynamic force of the front, we had to put these slots in. So when the wing's down, they are open to stall the underwing. When the wing goes up, we close these, which turns on full power of the underwing to aero balance the car. So if you've got a wing at the back, you need, you need more grip at the front. So we close them. It's just car geek stuff, I just like that. It's just cool. <laughs> <laughs> it's just cool. But yeah, it is tied to the rear wing. So anytime the wing goes up, they work hydraulically on the next thing is how to get in here. Okay, let me show you where the release is because it's not obvious. It's inside here. So I'll, let, I'll let you come through, and then we'll open up the door. Um, the uh, so it's just a normal pull latch, but to find it, you've got a rescue arm on the side, and then you just go straight in, and it's on the side. You'll run your fingers like right into it, right. and then you pull it. But it's on the side at that height. Um, everybody kind of has a little, like, well, where is it type of thing on the side of silk hat. Okay. And 
then to be able to get it to here, we're going to go fingers down on top of the yellow thing and do that. So, if you're expecting more luggage space, <laughs> again, this is not your cap. You can put three bodies in there. You do have washer fluid, the main hydraulic fluid. This is what runs the wings, the suspension, and everything. All the big heavy fuses, brake fluid, your front anti roll bar, your power steering rack, and then a valve block. And a valve block is what sends the pressure to all of the wings and the suspension and stuff. So, at this point, give me two minutes, let me finish getting the charger ready, and we'll talk about battery charger stuff. Okay. How you doing? Not bad. Bad <laughs> worst days. <laughs> I remember the excitement from the first Ford GT. Oh, yeah. Bit no. Similar. It's absolutely fantastic. I've never felt cheese like that in anything in my life. Amazing. <laughs> I've got to have one now. Well, honestly, I've never been pinned in the seat like that in anything. I've got to have one now. That was crazy. Slightly different. And a long time ago. Mm hmm. That was 07? No, that was 06. Okay. Oh, you got one right after Joe Turbo does, yeah. Yep. Yeah, the infamous, I gotta have one. I have to have this. How long is to it? You're not gonna sleep, are you? Oh my God, no! <laughs> I lost my mind that day. I think it was at Carabas is where you lost your mind. At dinner. Yeah, yeah it just continued. <laughs> yeah, I'm so glad we had that moment. Captured on video, that's infamous. <laughs> so, plug in the battery charger, okay? I've always put battery charger twice on the list of things to remember so you don't forget, okay? There's two ways of hooking up the battery charger. The first way is with these, okay? So if you had a, a 17 or an 18 car, this was the only way to hook up the charger. Okay, positive, negative, and then obviously you plug in that wire for this way. Okay. You can run this wire over the top of the tire. You can then pull it through. So you can see the tire is down either side. Oh, okay. So you can kind of fish it across the top of the tire. That way, you don't have a wire hanging out over here. It, it just looks neat. Right. Um, whenever you've got it plugged in, it is a lithium battery. God, that's a pretty car. It's gangster. That's a pretty car. It's carbon fiber wheels, Ooh. It's which are lovely. And you've got to use a lithium charger for a lithium battery. And the battery itself lives underneath this headlight. So if you ever have to change the battery, this comes off, this comes off, this comes off, this comes off, battery comes up. Yeah. So, keep it plugged in, right? <laughs> right? Probably got to keep it plugged in. When you plug it in, the light comes on and tells you, you got power. Then it tells you how many power batteries you've got. Easy stuff, right? Now, here's where batch lithiums always get like a bad reputation. That, that they keep going flat all the time. Now, they've got the great battery, but they've got a very small working window. So we're at 13 volts right now. Whenever it gets to 11 volts, it shuts down. Okay, so whenever it shuts down and it goes to sleep, the, electronic, the car is electronically dead. The battery will not give out any more power because it's dropped below its 11 volt minimum. Okay. If that happens, even with the charger on, if it's thinking about something, it can run the battery flat off, run the battery to sleep. Okay, if that happens, that warning light is going to be on. This tells you that the car is, ele is electronically dead. To wake it up, you hold and press and hold reset for 10 seconds. That kind of zaps it and goes, hey, I'm here to help. Take the power. Once you've done that, and the car is now alive again, it's above 12 volts, so you can get in the car and work it and start it. That's the biggest deal on any lithium. You need this style of charge you need that reset button and that's what the reset is for is to zap the battery to wake it up again right okay. 
So I said there's two ways of hooking up the charger. The first way is this way. The second way is this little doofus. This goes in the luggage compartment. That's area. a pretty car. You can plug it in, plug it into the charger. This will charge the battery just as good as that. So you've got to choice this or that. Hmm. Okay. God, that's a pretty car. That's gangster. If you forgot to plug in the charger and then you come up to it one day, it's dead. Okay, it's been sitting for a week. We don't charge her on and it's dead. Okay. Let me grab the key and I'll show you how to break into the car. <laughs> Which is always exciting. Standard Ford key because it is. <laughs> if these buttons don't work, the car's dead. You've got to pull the key out, click, and naturally it opens up the engine cover. So now this is open. If you have this, you can plug it in, press reset, you're good to go. Right? But well, let's say that you've been away and you forgot the charger and you forgot the wire. But the car's still there, right? We somehow need to get the front hood open to be able to get a jump pack onto the positive and negative terminals, right? But we need to get the driver's door open to be able to get the front open. So to get the driver's door open, you stand right here, you gotta reach under, and pull that tag that you can't see. <laughs> but this is where it's a team effort because you've got to pull it at the same time as somebody else is pulling on the door. I said, you know what I mean? So that is if you've forgotten the charger and you've forgotten the plug, you need to phone a friend. Get out of the way! <laughs> to be able to help you in your car. Just get out of the way. Oh. So, Again, you gotta keep it plugged in all the time. Yeah, don't do that. Exactly. Yeah. So as a part two to the opening up the door bit, right? If it's to the point where you have to pull the thing to get the door open. If the window is still up in the rubber and you pull that tag you will smash the window when you just pull the door because the window is up in the rubber, right? Just before the battery goes to sleep, it's supposed to tell this window, I'm about to go to sleep, so drop. Drop it like it's hot. So then it's slightly open, so you can pull and open up the door without breaking the window. Bloody door! Because it's a frameless door. Anytime you activate the switch, it drops just a little bit. Right. So, I don't need to tell you that because we may have had cars that forgot mm. to drop when the battery went to sleep. So if you're to the point where you have to pull the thing to get the door open and the windows up here, stop, you gotta call a service dealer. They've gotta come out and let the mechanic break into it. He's got a secret way of jumping wires to get into it, okay? So you just want to keep it plugged in, basically. Is, 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 the, is the short story for all this battery stuff. Plug it in at the front, plug it in at the back. If you forget, you're going to use the key, plug it the bumper, and go on from there. Right. Engine braking period. Right? The official braking period for the engine is 600 miles. Okay. Here's the restrictions. For the first, it's, it's wide awake right now. I mean, you can beat it as hard as you want right now. But we ask you to just, be, just bed it in. Be, meaning, don't bounce it off the rev limiter. Don't use launch control. Just drive it like a regular car, okay? Please rev it, just don't abuse the car, okay? For 600 miles. After the 600 miles are finished, 
You can do anything you want with it, but do not go and do a track day with this oil in it. You know, if it gets to six, if it gets to 700 miles and you get that itch that you want to go and do a track day, change the oil before you go to the track. Okay. Otherwise, it's just going to be on street. Street use, this oil is good all the way to 5,000 miles. Or one year, whichever's first. Right. Okay. Uh, but yeah, just first 600, just treat it like a regular car and then go for it after that. Uh, tires. Uh, these tires are built more like a race tire rather than a road tire. Okay. Um, in the owner's manual, it says for the first 300 miles, you got to bed in your tires. But because the Michelin's, they don't tell you how to do it. So, car guy to car guy, treat this tire like a race slick. Okay. The first time you drive it, it's going to dance across the road and it's not going to feel very nice. As the tire gets hotter, okay, your first time driving it, it's gonna kind of, it's gonna knock the release agent off and it's gonna heat cycle the tire. Once you've done the first heat cycle and got rid of all that release agent, the tire is good to go. You'll feel it come to you. Within 10 minutes of kind of just trying to warm up the tires a little bit, you've then suddenly, you'll turn in and oh man, it just goes around the corner. Before that, it's like a little sketchy. Once the tires are hot, boom, it just hooks and goes. A real hot rod. Oh yeah. I'm gonna set the pressures before I leave because we're at like 35, 36 right now. For street use, you want 30, 30, all around for your tire pressure. I like them. 30 is a cold pressure. I love the sound they make. Is it fast? Very. This car is Ford Pass compatible. So Ford Pass is a phone app and it looks like, you get there, wrong one. Looks like the big F, okay? You're gonna download it on your phone, hit it, create an account, blah, blah, blah. And then you could hook up Ford Pass to your car. Okay, just follow the prompts. Um, you can then see tire pressures, fuel level, um, a lot of other stuff, but the big thing is it's a location, GPS, where is the car? Hmm. So if it's not here one day, <laughs> oh, it's down at Publix. Oh, okay, who, who stole the car? We got that Publix, so you can actually watch it on your phone. I think I deserve a little appreciation. So yeah, please download four passes, it's a good thing. Whenever the car is in storage, whenever you're not actually driving it, and it's at home like this, do me a favor and leave the wing in the up position. Okay, here's why. Because even now, the wing is under hydraulic pressure to keep itself level, right? Naturally, over time, as the pressure bleeds off, it can start to droop into air brake mode. From here, it wants to lean forwards. When it does, you get twitched in the body. Then when you restart it, it goes and marks up your, up, your, up your rack on here. So, if it's up, over time, whenever the pressure bleeds off, it doesn't go down, it just droops. So if you come out one day and it's full vertical, don't worry about it, just restart it, and it'll come back flat again. Okay. The way to do it is put some, some room. driving here, before you turn it off, you're gonna use your left thumb roll it all the way up to T for track, press OK, the car goes down, lifts up the rear wing. Then you can go back to normal, so the car jumps back up to this height, turn the engine off. The wing stays up. Because remember, once you've launched the wing, you can't get it down unless you drive it. The last thing, before I need to take a break so I can think about it, is, uh, the big vent pole right there. This right here. When you're driving it, this is where all the rocks are gonna come through and hit the side of your cat, right? If you go onto the Ford GT Forum, there's a guy on there selling gravel screens. All the screens. Yeah, yeah. It's yeah. all over there. there. Oh, you got them? Oh, okay. Are you gonna get it? You know, I get those most of them. That's good, because they're always on back order and nobody can ever get touch. Yeah. So, 
So thank you for being prepared. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's literally two screws that take 30 seconds to fit. Um, some people love them, some people put them on, drag it once and then don't like it. So it's up to you. I, what I do, Tori, is you know, I keep them on and then at the end of the drive or every couple drives, I take the vacuum hose and I just reach inside here and suck out the rocks that are caught in there and it sucks out any debris that gets caught in there. Right. So just the vacuum hose is all you need and you do it every couple times you take it out. It's a lot easier. That's what's incredibly exciting. Well, if you're a performance drive, you just break really, really Yeah. Good. So, welcome to your GT, right? So inside here, this is, this is your baby book. <laughs> All of your pictures from inside the factory as it's been born. All of a sudden you got the mess. Yeah. yeah. All this cool stuff. That's a barn, huh? Yeah. yeah. When it reopens, make sure that you, that you try and do the tour. If it ever reopens, I should say. <laughs> right. It's so definitely, fun. yeah, let's hope so. Um, it's definitely worth it. Spec sheet of what the car is and the VIN sticker. And this VIN sticker sticks on the ordering kit. The big box that splits in half, that'll stick on the top of the box. And then this is more stuff you can spend more money on. The helmet, the suit, the watch, whatever else you come up with. Okay. It's a uh, Christmas present stuff. <laughs> and then you've also got your window sticker as well with a picture of your car on it. Pretty nice. That is cool. So we, uh, it's just a nice little package to kind of finish everything off with. And, uh, so this came inside the cab. Um, other than the glove box between your legs, between the driver's seat there, um, the only other storage is lean the seats all the way forward, and this goes down the back of the seats. There's a very thin for this only size thing. <laughs> you know, you, you can put like a slice of bread down there, but a full sandwich is not going to go down back to six. <laughs> but this fit in there, so that's uh, that. That's the whole deal on storage. There isn't any. All right. Okay. Sound good? Yes. Mm -hmm. That was a great presentation. Yeah, thank you. Resemblances in the in the nostrils for the radio yeah. they have there. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. They're like Than the stock one. Do you just put 93 in it or 93 octane or do you put race fuel on it? I uh I juice it a little bit.
you're not going to have to run like an engine equipment. Just just looking at the size of the tires is cool. <laughs> I hope you love looking at the size of the tires because like, oh yeah, that's cool. <laughs> Seeing it. It's life. That's a hundred percent, hundred percent race car. It has a really good road presence. 